Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation of how to succeed with cloud-based CRM. My name is Michael Griffin and I'm the founder of ClientLook. So everyone wants to know how to succeed with cloud-based CRM. Well, there are probably lots of ways, but I'm going to show you some strategies today that you probably never considered, that are far easier than you ever realized. In fact, with only a couple simple changes, you could be on your way towards a whole new level of productivity. We're going to focus on how to leverage hardware. Now, I know this is supposed to be a software presentation, but I'm going to tell you something now that I'll bet nobody else has ever suggested before. I think it's entirely possible that you are significantly underutilizing the hardware you already have, like your smartphone and tablet, at least as it relates to CRM. I'm going to show you examples of how you can use these mobile devices to complement your CRM efforts in ways that you never thought possible. We'll discuss how to maximize productivity with CRM. You'll learn how to turn every minute of every day, no matter where you are or what you're doing, into an opportunity to achieve peak productivity using CRM. You'll see how to get things done even during typical downtime periods, like while you're at home waiting for appointments and even driving without risking your life, I promise. But by fine-tuning your approach to CRM and even utilizing just a few of the concepts you're going to see, there will be significant and lasting gains in your ability to get things done. You'll also see how to outsource more. And again, I know we're supposed to be talking about CRM, but outsourcing is absolutely key to your CRM success. But what exactly are you supposed to outsource with CRM and, and who do you outsource it to? Well, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. And the bottom line with all these strategies is that they're so simple, they're so cost effective, and they're easy enough to implement today. As we get started here, let me give you a quick list of the technology you're going to see today. You may have all these tools in place already, in which case you can hit the ground running. If you're still missing some, then at least you'll know where your next investment should be. Here's one big suggestion I'll make. Pay close attention not only to these tools, but also to the processes you'll see. Compare how these processes stack up to those in your business and look for ways to improve Ideally, you'll find loads of things that can make you better. So let's get started with real-life examples of how to be successful with cloud-based CRM. I think you'll love what you're going to hear. CRM success can start early. Well, in the morning, that is. In fact, you probably never realized that rolling out of bed could be so productive. But remember, a good CRM allows you to be effective anytime and anywhere. Even if you're sitting with a cup of coffee in one hand and the news playing in the background, you can still get things done. So let me show you how your smartphone and client look turn this seemingly brain dead time into the start of a super productive day. You could probably even do this with one eye still closed. So you roll out of bed and you grab your smartphone. It doesn't matter which one you use. Here you see my iPhone 5 and I'm going to check my email. At the top of the list, I notice an email from a client of mine, Pete Sonoma. He's got a board meeting tomorrow and wants me to send him an updated market report he can present. I'll have to take care of that back at the office, but in the meantime, I'm going to reply to Pete and let him know that I'll have that report to him before his lunch meeting. I type my message as I normally would, and most people would just hit send. But since I use Client Look, I'm able to connect this message, or any message for that matter, back to Pete's record in my online database. All I have to do is BCC an email to my personal ClientLook email address. ClientLook matches the message to any recipients in my database. So I choose my pre-saved address book entry and I'm all set. Now I click send and the message heads off to both Pete and ClientLook. I organize all my emails this way. Now I know that market report is a little outdated, so I need to schedule an activity for myself for tomorrow to make sure I update it before I send it to my client. So I pop over to my calendar app and I schedule an appointment for tomorrow morning. Now simply by adding this to my calendar, it's going to synchronize to ClientLook. In fact, the synchronization goes both ways. Anything that I add to my ClientLook calendar gets added to my iPhone calendar as well. Now as I'm packing up to leave for the morning, I find a business card that I've been meaning to enter into my ClientLook database for a long time. So here's what I do. I lay it down flat on my desk and I flip over to my smartphone's camera app. 
and I take a picture of the contact information on this business card. Then, with the photo intact, I flip over to my email app and I create a new email. I'm going to send this email to the ClientLook Virtual Assistant team, which is a, a team of ClientLook experts who's standing by to enter contact information, add updates, schedule appointments, and the instructions that I give them are to add this new contact and to schedule a follow-up call for me with this person for next Tuesday. So in my iPhone here, I navigate to where I've saved the photo there in my camera roll. I select the picture and I paste it into my email. I click send and the email is sent off to the Client Look Virtual Assistant team for processing. I don't remember the last time that I manually entered a business card that I picked up. My typical process is to photograph it and email it off to the Virtual Assistant team and within minutes it becomes a part of my database with little or no effort on my part. So that's a great way to start your morning and your business day really hasn't even kicked off yet. So let's let's recap what we've done. Well, we replied to a client's email, a pretty simple process on the phone, but based on the fact that I use Client Look, I could BCC my personal Client Look email address and not only reply to that client's email, but also add an update to that client's record with the body of the email and any file attachments within that contact CRM record. Now the next thing I did was knowing that I had to update that market report back at the office, I scheduled an event for myself on my phone. Now the great thing about using Client Look in conjunction with my mobile device is I synchronize on an ongoing basis everything that I add in my phone to Client Look and vice versa. So I add the event to my phone before I leave the office. When I hit the office and I pull up Client Look, I can see that event appear there. Anything that I might have added at the office or in Client Look Online anywhere also gets transported to my mobile devices. And lastly, I photographed a business card. Now this sound, might sound like a very simple thing, but basically this allows me to add data, to schedule appointments, to do just about anything I want using the virtual assistant service from ClientLook. I took a picture of a business card, attached it to an email with instructions to add that person and to schedule a follow-up call the next day, all of which gets done without my personal interaction at all. Another key part of CRM success is how effective you are before, during, and after your client meetings. And as I'm going to show you, with the right mobile tools, with the right online software, you can be continuously informed, continuously engaged, and always effective no matter where you are or how you're working. Now you're in the lobby of your client waiting for your meeting to start and you've got your iPad and you decide to check some emails. The first message that you look at is a confirmation from the virtual assistant that the business card that you sent them prior to leaving your home has been entered and the appointment has been scheduled. Now the second message you look at is an email from a contact that you met yesterday at a marketing event and they've attached a V card. Now if you click on that and choose create new contact, you can add this contact to your iPad's address book. But since Client Look is synchronizing with your iPad address book, by adding it to your iPad, you're effectively adding that same contact to Client Look. Now the next email you look at is an email from John Williams, who's a vendor for one of the projects that you're working on. And it's a quote for some services. Now this is an email and a file that you want to make a part of your electronic project in Client Look. So all you need to do is to forward this email, including the attachment, to your Client Look project. Each one of your Client Look projects has its own email address, which you choose from your address book. And when you click Send, Client Look is going to do two things. It's going to attach this email to your project. It's also going to attach the email to John Williams, who is the sender, and also a contact in your database. So now you're getting ready to go in and meet with your client. So you want to check a couple of things in his record in Client Look. So you pop over to your iPad's browser, you log into Client Look, and you access your contacts record. 
and you look at the notes from the property tour that you had a couple of weeks ago just to verify that you have all the information that he wanted you to confirm. Now before you head in, you want to click the Raven Parkway project link there because that project record contains a file that you know your client wants to see. So you access the project record and you start to scroll down the updates tab. Now the first entry that you see there is that email that you just forwarded while you were sitting in the lobby. It contains that remediation estimate as a Word document. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see report.pdf. Now Client Look allows you to associate an unlimited number of files to your contacts or your projects. So while you're sitting in a client's office like this, you can click a file, it will load in your iPad and be available to both you and your client for viewing. So now let's summarize the main ways in which CRM is going to make you more effective with client meetings. The first is when you were in the lobby, you added a Contacts V card to your iPad. Now this simple process did two things. First of all, it added that contact to your mobile device. And secondly, it synchronized it to ClientLook. ClientLook provides you with bi-directional contact and calendar synchronization. So anything that you add to your mobile device's address book gets synchronized up to ClientLook and vice versa. You forwarded a vendor email to a ClientLook project email address. Now this associated that email to the project and it attached the file as we saw in the Raven Parkway project record. But it also associated that email and that file to the contact who sent the email. So it did two things with one process. You logged into ClientLook and you did so to review your client's notes. What did you speak about last? What was the outcome of that property tour a couple of weeks ago? And what were you supposed to follow up on? You also opened a project file that was stored online. Think of all the times that you've been with clients and needed access to file or contact information that was stored in your database that was inaccessible. Using ClientLook and a tablet or a mobile device, you'll have instant access online to all of these details anytime you need them. Another way to achieve CRM success is through what I call productive driving. And this is by recruiting the virtual assistant team at ClientLook to add updates for you, add contacts, schedule appointments while you're driving. It hinges on your ability to simply make phone calls and to direct this team to do work on your behalf. Considering the amount of time that you spend in the car, this is the perfect opportunity to drive more effectiveness with CRM. So now I've left my client meeting, I'm in my car, and I need to add an update to ClientLook. So I pull up the virtual assistant on my speed dial, I call them, and the exchange might go a little something like this. Hello, please leave a message for the Client Look Virtual Assistant. Be sure to include your name and the email address used in your account. Hi, this is Robert Taylor. That's R Taylor at TaylorCompanies.com. And I just met with George Adams and we discussed 5505 Raven Parkway. He wants to make an offer about 10% under the asking price please add that update, link it to the project, and schedule a follow-up call for me tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thank you. Now that entire exchange took me about 30 seconds. My voicemail is gonna be retrieved by somebody on the Client Look Virtual Assistant team who will access my account and enter a contact update, a project update, and an appointment for tomorrow. Now as convenient as that was for me, Probably the most important factor is that a critical piece of information in my business did not fall through the cracks. Now I return back to my office, what I call Command Central, and while I was gone, I was able to mobily add contacts, add appointments, add project updates, link files, but now I log in to ClientLook using the computer of my choice, either a Windows PC or a Mac. It doesn't matter. Now when I log into ClientLook, I'm presented with Scoop. This is the master activity feed of everything that goes on in my database between my team and I. You'll see the, the first update shown there is the one that I dictated to the virtual assistant via voicemail, the update from George Adams. You see it's related to a project as well. There's an update below that that was added by one of my team members and there's a comment that's associated with it as well. 
If we scroll down a little further, you'll see the update that was uh, forwarded while I was sitting in the client's office and the update below there to Pete Sonoma, which was my reply first thing this morning where I told him I would put together that market information for the reporting needs tomorrow. The scoop feed contains every update, every completed event, every completed task, every email that all of my team members and I contribute to ClientLook, and it's all searchable. But ClientLook is also the host for all of your contact data. So if I click the contacts list, I'm going to see all the people in our database. These contacts could be imported from Outlook, from ACT, from Google contacts, from my phone, from my iPad, or wherever. ClientLook is made to serve as the one contact repository that replaces all the other silos of information that you might have. By consolidating all of your data in one online site, you're able to synchronize to your mobile devices and share information with your team and clients seamlessly without any duplication or redundancy. Now the other thing that ClientLook will do for you is track all of your activities. We click the activities module to see that. Now here I see about the next week's worth of activities, but there are two that we scheduled when we were out. The first one to George Adams was done through the virtual assistant, and the second one at 10.30 there on Thursday was done when I added the appointment to my iPad and it's synchronized into ClientLook. Now, in addition to activities that have times, which we call events, we can also view tasks, which are accessed by simply clicking the tasks link at the top. This is my laundry list of running to-dos that I have to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis. It tracks them by due date, and I can organize and sort them in a variety of different ways. Now I want to reach out to my client, George Adams, so I click his contact name. Now, you'll see the Updates tab appear, and the update that's shown at the top is the one that I dictated via voicemail to the virtual assistant. It contains the outcome on my meeting, and it's even associated to the project. Now if I click the Activities tab, I would expect to see the activity that I wanted them to schedule for tomorrow as well. So there's my follow-up regarding offer for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now since I last met with George, I was able to create that offer that he wants to submit. So I want to send him an email with the offer and a market report for his review. So I enter the details of the body of my message, the subject, and I want to attach a couple of files. So I choose those files from my hard drive. Now just like the examples that you saw on the iPhone and the iPad, if I were to BCC this outgoing email to either my client look contact or project email address, the email will be linked not only to the designated project, Raven Parkway as you see there, but also to George Adams' contact record. So I'll send this message and then I'll jump back over onto George's record to see it show up in his updates. Now if I look in the updates tab, I see the body of the message. I see the project that the email was related to, and I see the two files that were associated. ClientLook organizes every contact and project email that I ever send now, including the files. So when I pull up projects or I pull up contacts, I always see messages there. Now remember when we were sitting in George's lobby and I was using my iPad, I added a contact to my iPad through the vCard import, and the contact's name was Roger Smith. So you can see that it shows up when I search for it in the contacts list. If I click the record, I should see Roger Smith's contact appear that's been synchronized from my iPad. So I want to call Roger and talk to him about a few of my projects that I think might be a good fit for the Smith companies. So I place the call, and now I want to add an update. So I go to the Updates section, and I enter the text of my message. I spoke to him about a few projects. We agreed to meet next week. Now I want to relate this update to the projects that we discussed. So I click the Show Projects List uh, link, and on the left I see all of the projects that I'm related to within ClientLook. And I select one or a handful of these, and using the arrow buttons in the middle, I associate this update to the, um, to the projects. Now doing so seamlessly allows me to enter one update and have that update related to multiple projects all at once. After I've entered the data, all I need to do is click Add This Update, and the project update will be complete. You'll see it appear in Roger Smith's record, and you'll see that it's related to three different projects.
Now we can always see the projects that an update like this is related to by clicking the projects pop-up. And in this case, you'll see the three projects shown. But let's say that I'm interested in seeing everything that's going on with one of these projects, Raven Parkway as an example. So I simply click the Raven Parkway link and the project detail page for this project should appear. Now the first thing you'll notice is the big project email address shown here right in the middle of the page. As a project participant, I'm provided my own personal project email address so that I can send anything I want via email into this project. Now just like with a contact record, the updates tab of a project tells me everything that's going on with this project. For example, you can see in the top there my update that I uh, added to Roger Smith's record. Down below that, you can see the email that we sent to George with the offer, including the two files linked to it. Now the update below that is the one that we dictated to the virtual assistant and asked them to associate to the project. And going still further on, we see the update that we forwarded while we were sitting in George's lobby that contains the remediation estimate also associated to the project record. Now the Participants tab shows you the list of people that you've allowed to have access for free to this project from the outside. These could be your clients, they could be vendors, they could be anybody involved in some sort of an assignment. You simply click Invite Participants, Client Look sends them an email and they gain unlimited access to this project, to the files. They can add updates, they can download updates, they can even add comments. Now if we jump back into Scoop, you'll see the last two updates, that Roger Smith phone call and the George Adams email that we just submitted, both shown at the top of the list. Now I'd like to share with you some takeaway points. These are the core concepts that, no matter what you might have learned today, that I hope you take to heart. They're things that are core to CRM, to productivity, and to mobile computing in general. The first is to integrate everything. You saw today how we were able to seamlessly jump from an iPhone to an iPad to a computer and enjoy the same level of experience and add contacts, view our calendar, view notes across all of the platforms. That's because everything is integrated, everything synchronizes, and everything accesses one main web-based database. Make sure that whatever you choose integrates together. Now, ABC to me means always be connected. So, obviously, to enjoy the benefits of a cloud-based solution like ClientLook, to use your iPhone, to use your iPad, you have to be connected to the Internet. So, invest in whatever technology you need to make sure that you have a high degree of bandwidth and that you're connected wherever you go. This is important, whether you're at home, whether you're at the office, or more importantly, when you're in the field. So. For tablet choice, as an example, make sure you choose one that allows for cellular access and one that's not just Wi-Fi. As high-tech as we are, nobody invests time these days in training. Make sure that your choices of hardware and software are as simple as possible. It has to be, otherwise it's not going to work. As quickly as possible, migrate every business process that you can to the cloud. Everything you saw today relies on cloud-based technology. If you're rooted in the desktop, if you're using a contact management system, even word processing or spreadsheet creation that's relying on a desktop program, you're going to be suffering and you're going to have a competitive disadvantage. Do it all in the cloud and move to the cloud as quickly as possible. As low-tech as the virtual assistant is, it's represented to ClientLook subscribers one of the most significant innovations any of them has ever used. It's necessary for you to use a virtual assistant to really reap the kind of CRM efficiencies that you need to be successful in the business. Use a virtual assistant and rely on them to do all the data entry that you can't handle. Well, that's it. I'm Michael Griffin, and I want to thank you for attending our How to Succeed with Cloud-Based CRM webinar. I want to encourage you to visit us at ClientLook.com to sign up for a free trial account and to put into action everything that you saw here today. Feel free to contact us with any of your cloud-based CRM questions, and we look forward to seeing you at our next commercial real estate technology webinar. Have a great day.